Okay, here we're going to look at probability um, and how it applies to a certain type of events that we're going to get to right away. So we should probably start off by looking at what probability is. Um, and we've probably seen this before. Um, and probability is just how likely something is going to happen. Um, you know, when we say a probability, we're trying to look at whether or not something's going to happen most often, um, but we're really just looking at how likely something's going to happen. And we can measure this in a number of different ways. We can look at it um, as if it's a fraction, so something like one half, um, or it could also be put as a decimal, like 0 0.5, or we could also put it as a percent, and we know that 0.5 is the same as 50%. Um, so a lot of different ways that we can write probabilities, um, but they all end up meaning the same thing. <clears throat> When we're looking at probability, we look at what's called an event. An event is just a single result of an experiment. So if you think of flipping a coin, um, when you get a heads, that's an event. When you get a tails, that's an event. If you roll a dice or a die, I guess, um, and you get a six, that is an event um, because it is a single result from an experiment. We also need to take a look at what's called an independent event. And an independent event is a special type of event where um, they are not affected by previous events. So when you flip a coin, um, the next time you flip a coin, doesn't matter what you had before, it's totally independent. It doesn't matter what has happened in the past. Um, it's independent, it's by itself. Um, it's not affected by anything like that. Um, and when you roll two different dice, they don't affect each other. That's the example I wrote down here. Um, they are independent of each other. Their results are not affecting each other, so they are called independent events. On the other side, we have what are called dependent events. And dependent events are when the outcome of an earlier event affects the outcome of a later event. And that's kind of a weird definition, but if we think about it this way, um, if you're looking at a bag full of candies, say you've got red candies and you've got blue candies, um, every time you take out a candy, there's one less of that type for you to get. So um, if you have four candies in there to start out with, there's two blue, two red, and you pull out a red one, the probability changes the next pull you take out of the bag. We're not gonna really look at dependent events this year. That's gonna show up in later math classes, but I wanted to make you aware of what they are. <clears throat> we also have what's called a sample space, and this is um, important for us to know because it's gonna tell us how many outcomes are possible from a experiment. So sample space is just all the possible outcomes of an experiment. So if we look at a dice, um, or a die, I guess, uh, you could get a, a one, you could roll a two, you could roll a three, you could roll a four, you could roll a five, you could roll a six. This right here, this is called your sample space. Similarly, when you flip a coin, your sample space is just heads or tails. That's what a sample space is. It's just all the possible outcomes of an experiment. And we'll take a look at how we can find um, the size of a sample space later on. Now we have uh, one more maybe one more um, definition to look at here. It's called favorable outcome. And this one's kind of confusing, so pay attention here. Um, this is the outcome of interest. And what I mean by that is getting what you're looking for in experiments. So um, a favorable outcome, if you're flipping coins, you're looking at how many times a head shows up. That is your favorable outcome. That's what you're looking at, not tails. Although tails could be your favorable outcome, you just have to decide or be told in the question that you're given um, what your favorable outcome will be. Oh, and last but not least here, we need to look at how we can actually calculate the probability of uh, an event happening. And it's actually a really simple formula uh, that we can look at. And it's basically just our probability is equal to our number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of the possible outcomes. Okay, so if I take a look at um, this question here. So let's say there's 12 different outcomes from a rolling a dodecahedral dice. That's just a dice with 12 sides. What is the possibility of rolling a seven? So we know there's only one way to roll a seven with one dice. So we, we can write that our probability, I'm just going to use P, is equal to our one, this is our one way that we can get a favorable outcome, divided by 12. And I can leave it just like this. I can also turn it into a decimal or a percentage if I want. Um, usually it'll be specified in the question what we're looking for.